I am awfully white today. Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm gonna show you Wave's new free plugin that they released for Black Friday. It's called Magma Lil Tube. I think you're gonna be really surprised because it's sounding pretty awesome on pretty much everything I'm putting it on. What is this free plugin, you ask? It is a distortion slash tube compression slash saturation plugin. Basically, it can gently increase the perceived loudness or width of a track. And also at the same time, you can crank the dial and make it sound distorted and saturated. I could see people using this artistically as like a like telephone or distorted effect on vocals. Or I could also see you using it on something like the individual tracks themselves just to get them a little bit more perceived loudness or width. In this video, I'm gonna bring you into a session and we're gonna take a look at what this plugin sounds like on all these different sources. Hey, what is up YouTube? My name is Bobby Bailo and I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. If you're new here, thank you so, so much for joining me today. Be sure to hit the subscribe button because I drop new videos weekly to help you make better sounding music. And as a special thank you, since you're here spending your time with me and we're having a great, great time, a, a stellar, awesome time together today. In the description, I have a free gift for you. It is my comprehensive free plugin guide. It has a ton of different free plugins that I know sound awesome. So if you want some new or want some more free plugins, then go and check that out. Again, there's a free download link in the description. Here is the new plugin. This is Lil Tube. So it's very much like their One Knob series plugins. You just have a sensitivity controller here. You have an output gain controller here. And you have the drive knob. Something that you should know is that this plugin actually has some sort of compression and tube modeling that goes on even if you have the drive set to zero. Let's see what that actually looks like because we can do that. We can use science and scientific tools to see what's going on. Here is what it looks like when we analyze this plugin under this cool software called Plugin Doctor. So you can see that even with the knob at zero drive, we have a high pass and then we have actually like two bumps. One is at about 750 hertz and then we have a few dB bump up here at like 100 hertz. Uh, let's take a look at the dynamics and see if we have any compression going on. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of compression. Um, let's set the sensitivity to high and see what happens. Okay, here we go. So here we are starting to get some compression. So if we crank this up, there we go. So we are getting some sort of compression. And it's really interesting. There's actually two different curves here. So this is not your normal compression shape. There's a, quite a soft knee here, and then it has some weird shape to it, which I think gives it probably its unique sound. So if we really crank this, what does it do? So there you go, it's much more aggressive now. Something to be aware of with this plugin is that the level of compression and the level of saturation is dependent on the signal that's fed into the plugin. So for example, if your vocals are really loud going into this plugin, it's going to almost always sound distorted, okay? They have the ability for you to adjust the sensitivity of this plugin, and basically all this is doing is just adjusting the input gain feeding this drive circuit. So if the signal you're feeding into this is loud and you don't want to take the time to redo your gain staging, you can just change your sensitivity. So by putting it on soft, this is gonna lower the input gain feeding this drive circuit, but then it also makes up the gain at the end, so you don't have to worry about a change in the overall level. So if you want it to sound very subtle and just add a thickness or perceived enhancement to the volume, keep it on soft. If you wanna be a little bit more aggressive, you can leave it on normal, and if you're going for a really distorted type of sound, throw it on high. All right, so let's figure out what kind of saturation is happening under this plugin. We look, we have the test tone is at one kilohertz, and we have harmonics at two, three, and four, okay? So we're getting both odd and even harmonic. Okay, so if we turn up the drive, we're just getting a l louder and louder harmonics, okay? Totally cool. Let's change this to normal sensitivity. Okay, now we're getting a lot more harmonics. 
and then high, we're just smashing this thing. Now, a lot of people tell you not to mix with your eyes, so let's stop looking at all these crazy plots here and bring it into an actual session and see what it sounds like. All right, this song is by a band called Deer Spring. Let's hear it. Cool. Now what I'd like to do is go through each of the different elements, put a little tube on each one to see what kind of sounds we can get out of it. So let's start with the vocals because that's probably what most of you are here for. So I've added little tube to my main vocal. Now I put this at the end of the vocal chain. Okay, so this is after this delay. So all the saturation that we'll be doing with this plugin is actually going to be applied also to the reverbs and the delays that I have on the vocals. So let's start out with it in the soft setting because this is gonna be the softest, cleanest setting we could possibly do for vocals. And then we'll really get into it with the high setting. So if we bypass this plugin, this is what our vocals sound like originally. Set for days of silence with the sin for good measure and with my face. You can see this light is changing a little bit on the louder notes. So if you want to really make sure you're not overdoing this plugin, it's probably a good idea to go to the loudest part of the song and set your settings there so that it doesn't like all of a sudden distort in the middle of the song. Okay, uh, just something I wanted to point out. So when this light starts getting brighter and brighter, that's indicating that we're adding more and more saturation to the signal. So let's go and start cranking this thing up. Painted, you won't see me coming among the trees. I wish that I could be more. So that sounds pretty awesome. It's, it's starting to get really full. You're hearing a lot more details. The perceived loudness is greater, but we also might be fooling ourselves. So we have to make sure to remember to compensate for that level increase. So I'm just gonna quickly try to gain match this. And this is actually something I wish this plugin had was an automatic gain compensation feature. Set for days of silence. There you go. This is giving you a little bit better sense of what the tonal characteristics of this plugin actually is doing. You can hear the vocals are a lot more forward now. It's like more of this mid range presence there. And uh, it just sounds a little bit thicker. It doesn't sound muddy. A lot of times, these distortion or saturation plugins make vocals sound muddy to me. And I think there's something going on, like what we saw with the EQ curves, where it's, it's not really saturating the, the bass frequencies as much as the top end. My face painted, you won't see me coming among the trees. I wish that I could be. Let's listen to it in the mix. Be more safe. So it adds a nice weight to the vocal that I, I'm kind of digging. Let's see what it sounds like if we go to this more aggressive setting. I clear, I clear, I clearly, and why do all the words replay when a magazine set for days of silence? So this could sound really cool if you're trying to go for like a dirtier style vocal or something that's, you know, really a little bit more aggressive and in your face. Pretty cool. Let's listen to it on the high sensitivity setting. So 
So if you're going for that telephone style effect or like a lo-fi thing, I think this is your setting. Let's check this out on the guitar bus. Wow, this one is much bigger. I don't know why it got so big, but that's kind of nice. Let's see what this sounds like on a guitar bus. We'll start with soft again. I will say the guitars do feel like they're a little bit wider, don't they? Let's go a little bit more aggressive. And on the guitar bus, this is like a lot more musical. I feel like it's almost like putting a guitar pedal right before your guitar amp. It just kind of has that same kind of feel to me. All right, let's listen to it in the mix. Without. With. Something else that I'm noticing that this plugin does is it makes the guitar performance a little bit more consistent. And I think that's that compression effect that's built into the back end of this plugin. All right, let's put this on bass. I'm excited to see what it does for that. Here we go. This is the bass tone we have without this plugin. Sounds very Blink 182 y. I love this bass tone though. All right, let's 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 uh, start again with it on soft and see how it sounds on a bass guitar where there's a lot of this sub bass energy that usually makes saturator sound really bad. Oh, that's kind of cool. I'm kind of liking it. it. It really fattens up the sound. If you need a little bit more weight or grit, the, the normal sensitivity settings kind of doing the trick. Now you really have to be careful here because at the highest settings, that low end starts doing some crazy stuff, but it's still pretty good. So if you want to use something like this on bass guitar, you might consider splitting the bass into two different frequency ranges, the low frequencies and the high, and just putting this on those high frequencies. That way you're not going to really run into any of this bass distortion kind of sound. Yeah, you can hear at these at the most aggressive settings, we're starting to lose the really deep, sub, powerful bass tone that was there originally. So you don't want to overdrive it too much if you're putting this on a bass bus. But I think this would sound pretty amazing if you had it on just like the higher frequencies. I really like the sound this has. And I'm shocked that Waves gave this away for free. That's really cool. All right, let's throw it on drums, because why the hell not, right? Here are our drums, without, with, it 
So you can hear it's going to really bite into that kick drum and start distorting early on. So maybe for drums, you're going to want to do a soft setting. And that's just going to give it a little bit more consistency to the drum performance and give it a little bit more perceived volume and width. Yeah, it just makes the drum sound a lot more powerful. You have to be super careful on a drum kit, and I think this is probably the, the most aggressive setting I would go if I was putting it on a drum bus. And I can't help myself. I'm gonna put this on the master bus just to see what it does, if it's gonna totally ruin it or what. For that, I would <laughs> probably not recommend this at all, but maybe this could be like a secret weapon. We'll find out. Um, my guess is sensitivity has to be soft or it's going to start distorting and it's going to ruin your song. So let's start with it off and just see what we get. think if you have it set to zero it kind of sounds cool and, and I'm having a hard time deciding if it's just a loudness thing or if it's just adding more bass or something but I'm kind of digging what it does just with this on without any drive okay so let's try pushing the drive up now That's how you get a loud master right there. Minus two LUFS. Ooh, I just wish I could Please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at seven, I'm already hearing it kind of break up and take away from the song more than it's adding to the song. So I would say if you do want to use this to try to squeeze out a little bit more loudness out of your master, be really careful with it. Maybe just a one notch or even zero notches because it's doing something that sounds kind of musical on the master bus. There you have it, Waves Lil Tube. So what did you think of this plugin? What was your favorite instrument that I used on it? Please let me know in the comments below and let's start a conversation. I think I'm gonna discover a lot of cool uses for this plugin because it has the ability to go from very subtle to way over the top. I want to remind you that I have that free gift for you waiting in the description. That is my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins guide. Go and download that if you're looking for a bunch of free plugin recommendations. With that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today. My name is Bobby Balo, and I hope to see you in another video.